The patient is positioned supine with a horizontal shoulder roll. The chest is entered via the second intercostal space anteriorly. The right internal mammary artery is clipped and divided above and below the third rib. The third rib is now transected close to its attachment to the sternum. A CO2 line is put in place, followed by an Alexis surgical soft tissue retractor. A low profile retractor is now inserted to improve exposure. And if the patient has a fatty thymus, a portion of this may be removed to gain good access to the pericardium, which is now opened. Care is taken to identify the phrenic nerve to avoid injury to it. The superior extent of the pericardiotomy extends to the level of the pericardial reflection on the aorta. I find it useful to identify the innominate vein as a superior landmark. Pericardiotomy is extended inferiorly and teed off, and multiple pericardial stay sutures with 2O silk are now applied. This provides excellent exposure. The patient is now heparinized and it is our preference to perform central aortic cannulation over a wire. The position of the wire is confirmed to be in the descending thoracic aorta by the anesthesiologist using transesophageal echo. And following this, a 22 French Medtronic EOPA cannula was now inserted over the wire and secured in place. Note that pediatric Rumel tourniquets are used throughout the case because of their lower profile. One may also perform conventional central aortic cannulation uh, using a blade uh, to make an incision followed by direct insertion of the cannula. We find the over the wire technique to be a little easier, particularly in obese patients. Venous cannulation is performed percutaneously from the right femoral vein. The wire is inserted and it's uh, positioned in the superior vena cava with echo control, following which the track is dilated. And a uh, long venous cannula is now placed. We usually place a 25 French cannula and position the tip in the superior vena cava. One has an excellent view of the right superior pulmonary vein through the incision that's been made, and a left ventricular vent is placed directly through this and secured in place. The aortic cross clamp was applied. We use a Signet aortic clamp. Uh, cardioplegia is given directly. Uh, we prefer to use del nido cardioplegia. If there is significant aortic incompetence, uh, one may give retrograde cardioplegia uh, directly through a cannula placed from the right atrium or placed previously by the anesthesiologist through the neck. The aortic valve is now exposed and the exposure seen here is typical uh, of most cases. The rest of the operation uh, proceeds in standard fashion. This is a heavily calcified aortic valve that is uh, excised and the annulus is carefully debrided as usual. One may implant a sutured or a sutureless valve. And here you see the placement of uh, pleasured sutures for a supraannular implantation of uh, an aortic valve. The view is excellent. Single shafted instruments with their lower profile make it easier to see clearly.
And in this case, a bioprosthetic valve is delivered down to the annulus. The sutures may be tied by hand using a uh, knot pusher. Our preference is to use a uh, titanium knot fastener. Sutureless aortic valves uh, are increasingly being implanted. And here you see uh, a Percival valve uh, being lowered down to the level of the annulus with three 4O proline guiding sutures, one placed at the nadir of each uh, cusp. The valve is now released in the prescribed fashion. A check is performed uh, to confirm that it's properly seated and that the leaflets co-op well. Following this, the valve is ballooned to four atmospheres and irrigated with warm saline for 30 seconds. Closure of the aortotomy is performed uh, with two sutures sorry, pledged at each end of the uh, aortotomy. We perform a two-layer closure with 4 proline. the first layer being a horizontal mattress, followed by an over and over layer. The usual de-airing maneuvers are performed and the cross clamp is released. Venting is performed through the aortic root as well as through the uh, left ventricular vent placed via the right superior pulmonary vein. Right ventricular pacing lead is now placed and following this the patient is weaned from cardiopulmonary bypass. Echo is used to confirm that the valve is well seated with no issues. Venous decannulation is performed uh, with pressure being held in the groin as protamine is being given. And this is further secured with a deep dermal stitch of 2O nylon, which will be removed prior to the patient's discharge. Central aortic decannulation has been performed in standard fashion. The soft tissue retractor is removed and the third rib is fixed with a KLS Martin T-shaped plate which is shaped to the curvature of the rib. We use three screws laterally and three medially on the sternum. We believe that sound fixation not only helps with good chest wall stability, but with post-operative pain relief. An intercostal nerve block has been performed prior to this, and we instill more um, local anesthetic, long-acting local anesthetic in the subcutaneous tissues before performing a standard closure. The results at one month, as you see here, are excellent, and patient satisfaction is very high. Thank you.